much. And joining me now to discuss this is Congressman Tom Garrett. He is a Republican representative from Virginia. He represents the Charlottesville area. Congressman, uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, you obviously uh, were very strong in your condemnation of the racist actors uh, at that rally in Charlottesville last year. I want to get your reaction, first of all, to President Trump's tweet this morning. Last year, he was heavily criticized for saying, quote, that there were very fine people on both sides of last year's event. This year, at least in this tweet, he's condemning all types of racism. What do you think has changed from the president's perspective? Well, he, he should have been heavily criticized last year. He, he, could, he, he totally blew that one, for lack of a more artful term. Uh, what he did do last year was a week later, there was an attempt at some sort of horrific rally like this in Boston, and he got it right the second time. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't defend his statements. I'm not here to do that. Uh, I'm glad uh, that with the tone that he struck this morning. Um, and, uh, you know, I, everybody's going to uh, choose an art for words from time to time. I was very disappointed in his characterization of uh, the people involved in the violence last year. What about his conduct to overall in the past year? He's been embroiled in some several high-profile polarizing debates over race relations since taking office. He recently renewing his fight with NFL players for their national anthem protests. He's been fighting with other professional athletes. Should he be doing more to bridge the racial divide, which is what he is what he to be doing this morning with this tweet? Well, again, I mean, I, I can't sort of step inside the mind of the president. I think he's mm -hmm. done some impressive things. I think some of the data, African-American uh, real earnings and unemployment at, at historic lows, at Latino, et cetera, fly in the face of some of the rhetoric, rhetoric where you hear that there were, you know, whatever he said, great people on both sides. Right. Um, I don't know why he's decided to sort of take an issue with the expression of individuals in the NFL. I think that we've all been blessed to live in a great but flawed nation uh, and, and certainly disagree with, with their decisions, but respect them uh, mm -hmm. and their right to make those decisions. So uh, I'm not the president. I can't channel him. I would do a lot of things differently. Um, but, you know, what we need to do is, is I think, look at outcomes and, and less at rhetoric. And then, Ryan, I mean, truly focus on those things which unite us while acknowledging that we have things that divide us. Uh, mm -hmm. And listen respectfully without the hate, invective, and ad hominem attacks against people on both sides. It's shameful and un-American. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Charlottesville, uh, the area that you represent in Congress, uh, what things are like a year later. Have you been in contact with police there about how they plan to maintain peace on this anniversary? Are you satisfied that order will be maintained this time around? I mean, well, look, I mean, to be completely honest, I was exceedingly um, shocked when it devolved into the violence that it did last year. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm very optimistic that this year we won't have any replays. There is all sorts of... Um, criticism to be levied, and rightfully you want to study when terrible things happen, what went wrong. Uh, I wouldn't lay all the blame at the feet of law enforcement professionals. There were people that were sort of setting guidelines on how they should act and react. Uh, having said that, let's look at the root cause, and the root cause are hate mongers and people, candidly, who I think just want to watch it burn. I don't even want to mm -hmm. use the names of these individuals publicly because I think it throws proverbial gasoline onto the flames. The, the reality is this. In this country, we have divisions and we have differences, but the people who throw, you know, newspaper boxes at each other and, and, and hit each other with sticks are in such a tiny minority on the fringes on either side that most of us have never met them and don't, don't know them. That's because mm -hmm. there aren't many of them, praise God. Let's not give them a megaphone to the extent, this is news that needs to be reported on, but let's not make these people more important than they should be. And again, it's, it's damaging. We should right. be able to disagree without being disagreeable. Well, to that point, this Unite the Right group, which was responsible for what happened in Charlottesville last year, they're planning another rally uh, here in Washington, D.C. tomorrow. It's going to be right next to the White House. Are you concerned about a, a similar level of violence breaking out tomorrow as counter protesters are expected to be there as well? Well, let me take a brief moment to take exception with their nomenclature, Unite the Right. National socialism mm -hmm. is socialism, which isn't right. Now, mm -hmm. these people are cowards. Uh, they, they, they hide behind the park police, they hide behind law enforcement, they engage in invective and rhetoric that, that any reasonable person would know would incite uh, fear, uh, anger, animosity on purpose, right? After their march on May, in May of last year, we wrote, you know, you can tell me all you want that this is your First Amendment right, but when you carry torches wearing all white at night next to a Confederate statue, I think maybe we either failed middle school history or are going for something else. These people are cowards. They're not indicative of who 
we are as a nation. They should be uniformly and roundly condemned, and they'll hide behind law enforcement, and I think D.C. will get it right. Uh, but the, to sh shine the light of, of, of attention on them, and again, it's news that needs to be reported, right. it almost threatens to give them more oxygen than they're worth. Mm -hmm. All right, and I do, uh, Congressman, while I have you here, I'd like to get your reaction uh, to the news that your fellow Republican colleague, Chris Collins, has uh, decided that he's going to suspend his reelection campaign. You're also not running for reelection. Uh, I mean, are you concerned uh, about uh, your fellow Republicans and that they could lose the House of Representatives in November? I, I mean, it, certainly anything is a reality, but candidly, Ryan, I listened to this from people on the right when they talked about how tough President Obama was on America and on the left, about how horrible President Trump is. The reality is this nation has been through horrible things and come out the back end surviving. If the Republicans lose the majority in the House, America will survive. If mm -hmm. they re retain it, America will survive. Um, you know, we need to not look at a snapshot in time, but the continuum of history. Um, and, and so, you know, I respect Chris uh, for his service and his decision, and, and we'll let the legal process play out. It's just kind of how it's supposed to work in this country. And, and just before you go, I, I'd like to get your expertise as a member of the Homeland Security and Foreign Affairs Committee. I mean, I'm sure you've seen this news about a plane stolen and crashed in Washington State overnight. Are you concerned about all of this? Does, it, does this display perhaps a, a blind spot in the system? And do you think that Congress should look into this? Well, they, we will look into it. I, I can tell you that for sure. Let me give you some breaking news here, though, back to Charlottesville. I sat in a, a closed session briefing probably two months ago about Charlottesville with the director of the FBI, amongst others, and asked if Russian intermeddling had to do with fomenting the flames of what happened in Charlottesville. I was told, yes, it did. I asked, hmm. is this information classified? They said, no, it's not. I've waited until today. But this wow. is what happens. The Russian intermeddling is seeking to pit Americans against Americans to undermine confidence in Western-style democracies. It's done so in the Baltic states. It's done so in Western Europe. It will continue to do so. We need to know what they're trying to do. What they're trying to do is make the world safe for kleptocrats and oligarchs, darks and dictators like Putin. And, and, and they use events like this divisive racial fight, uh, which, which really ignores the commonality that we as Americans have with one another, regardless of our race or ethnicity or religion. And this is the sort of thing they do. Uh, and so, and so, as a member of Homeland Security, seriously, that's what scares me most: that Americans will be pitted against Americans over, 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 you know, real differences, but that are minimal in the grand right. scheme of things. That we are an American family of brothers and sisters, regardless of religion, race, etc. And we need to focus on that while disagreeing where we need to, but with respect. All right, uh, important piece of information you, we got there at the end, Congressman. Uh, we so appreciate your perspective on this, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ryan, and thanks for what you do. Still ahead.